Okay, in the last video, we booted up our Windows 7 virtual machine and we ran sysprep on the Windows 7 VM to generalize the system. Then we restarted and we've booted now to a Windows PE boot disk. You can see the ISO file for this boot disk right here, winpx86.iso. And you can see that I'm booted into Windows PE. So now what we need to do is we need to capture the image. We need to capture the Windows 7 sysprepped generalized image so that we can have the image that we're going to use for, let's say, deployment on a network. So what I'm going to do now is, is figure out where all of my drives are. We've booted up this system and we're booted to this disk right here, right? So we have a drive for our boot disk image, right? Then there's a drive, the hard drive on the Windows 7 image, right? And we also have a flash drive that we're going to need to save this captured image to. So we need to locate where exactly are all our drives so that we know what we're capturing is indeed the system that we have sysprepped and we need to save it to the drive that we need to know is the correct drive. So I'll minimize this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run disk partition. So I'll type in disk part and hit enter and you can see now I'm in the disk partition utility and I'm going to type list disk to see the disks that are available. You can see that the program has found two disks. Disk 0 online 40 gigabytes. This is the hard drive of the virtual machine. And then disk 1 which is also online and it says 932 gigabytes. And this is my external USB hard drive. It's a Toshiba hard drive. So the disk partition utility sees both drives. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit the disk partition utility. So I'll type in exit and hit return. And you can see now that I'm on this X drive Windows System 32. Now what I need to do is, is I need to basically look around and see what are on the different drive letters. So what I'll do is I'll say dir c colon backslash and take a look at what's in the C drive. Let's see here. Nothing there. Change directories C colon. Nothing. All right, let's take a look at here. Change directories. We'll say C D colon backslash. Let's try C colon. All right, now I'm in the C drive. Clear screen. Okay, I did a clear screen command because I was basically lost. So I've put in the command C colon to switch to my C drive. And I'm going to put a DIR command to see what's in here. And it sees nothing. So now I'll put in D colon and take a look at the D drive. Put in a dir command and you can see that in the d drive we'll take a look we have program files program files x86 right it looks like this is the drive that we want to capture you can see there's wamp and we know that wamp was installed on our reference computer so now we know that the the drive that we want to capture is in fact the d drive so let's put in E colon and hit enter. And let's take a look at our E drive. So I'll put in a DIR command and see what's in the, the E drive. And you can see that after putting in the DIR command, we've got the boot directory, uh, boot manager, EFI directory, there's imagex.exe. So it looks like this drive, the E drive, is where our imagex program that we're going to use to capture the system is located. So that's good. So we needed to know that. So the last thing we need to figure out is where the drive is that is the external hard drive where we're going to save our captured image. So we'll switch to the F colon and hit enter. 
and put in a dir command. And you can see here that there's a bunch of directories in here that say dans, dans, dans. So this is my external hard drive. So that's useful. So now we know a lot of things. The drive that we want to capture is E. Um, no, I'm sorry, the drive that we want to capture is the D drive, right? That looks like the system for Windows 7 system with the program files folder, the users folder, and I recognize some stuff that I installed in there. And then the E drive is my Windows PE disk. And then the F drive is where we want to save to, right? So we're ready to go. So now all we need to do is tell ImageX basically what to do. So since I'm on the F drive right now, I'm just going to quickly do a dir command just to verify. All right, I'm on the F drive right now. That is where we want to save to. So, and then the ImageX program is on the E drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say E colon backslash image X. And that should basically, this command should take me to the E drive and launch the ImageX program. And then the drive I want to capture is, I believe, the D drive. So I'll put in forward slash capture and then a space and then the D drive and then a backslash. So right now we're going to run ImageX from the E drive. We're going to capture and we're going to capture from the D drive. Now let's just look up and make sure the D drive is what we want again. Just one more time. D drive, yes, the program files, users, WAMP, that's it. And then the drive that we want to save to. So the drive where ImageX is, the capture parameter, and then the drive we're going to capture, which is the D drive, and then space, and then F colon backslash. This is where we're going to save it to. We're going to give it a, uh, we're going to give it a name. So we'll say my image or my windows, let's say, dash image dot whim. And then we'll give it a label. In quotation marks, we'll put my image. And so that's the command. Now, if this command it works successfully, it'll launch ImageX, it'll capture everything from the drive D, and it says D colon backslash, then I put a space and save it to the F drive colon backslash with the name my-windows-image.wim with a label of my image. And so I'll just hit enter, and you can see that it's copying everything right now, scanning, and it's running. So this should create our WIM file. While this is copying, I want to mention one thing. For this scenario to work, you need to have your external USB hard drive mounted. You see in the flash diagram here that we have a USB flash drive and it's mounted. This is an actual physical USB flash drive that I've plugged into my laptop and the Windows 7 virtual machine has access to it. Now I know that, one, because it showed up here when we did a disk partition and saw the two disks. Um, but also, if I go to player here and um, I click on removable devices, no, no, I click on, yeah, that's it, removable devices, you can see there it says Toshiba External HDD, and you can see that it's connected because the, disc com the disconnect command is available. So I, I know that it's available. So, and you can see here now that it's got the files together, it's starting to run a progress bar on the creation of the WIM. Let's take a look here to see if it'll go up to 2%. You can see that the progress is at 2% and we have an hour and 23 minutes remaining. So this is going to take some time because it's working from this virtual machine. It's basically grabbing uh, that image of the virtual machine and then going to save it to my external USB hard drive. So I will pause the recording 
and then come back at the end. Okay, image X finished capturing the WIM file and copying it to the external hard drive. You can see here, progress 100% successfully imaged to the D drive. Now let's go take a look here. Now I'm actually on my physical computer. We can go and look under computer and let's see here. Actually, I don't see my drive here. The external hard drive is not mounted on my regular system. Let's go take a peek at it over here though. So we're in the F drive right now, right? So we'll put in a we'll put in a DIR command. All right, and there it is, my external drive. You can see here, and let's see if we see the file. My-windows-image.wim. You can see that it's three gigabytes, 3.5 gigabytes in size, and looks like it was successfully created. We've got a WIM file. So the generalized system worked, and it was captured, and then saved to my external USB hard drive. Now what we need to do is, for the next part, we need to, now that we have our WIM file, we need to deploy it to a computer, basically to an, an empty computer system, and take our uh, WIM file and basically install that WIM file or deploy that WIM file to an empty system.